Here we go. Good morning to you. I'm Gail King. We're in the Toyota Green Room with New York Times bestselling author. What's your name, New York Times bestselling author? <laughs> Angie Thomas. Angie Thomas is her name. Her first book was called The Hate You Give. It was adapted into a critically acclaimed film by the same name. Now she's out with a new novel. Already she's got a new novel. It's called... On the Come Up. On the Come Up. 20th Century Fox just announced it, too, will be adapted into a movie. Welcome to you, Angie Thomas. Thank you. So tell me what this is like for you. Your first book is out. It's a, it's a success. going to be a movie. Your second book is out, and they're already talking about making it into a movie. And you're feeling what? Uh, I feel like I'm living a dream. I really do. I feel like I'm going to wake up one day. You know, this is what little Angie dreamed about in Mississippi. What did Angie <laughs> dream about in Mississippi? Angie just dreamed about telling stories and seeing them come to life. Mm -hmm. She would see all these characters and things in her head, and she would write them down. She would tell her mom these stories, and she'd want to see them on screen one day. And what would mom say when she was <laughs> telling mom the stories? She would listen. She you would know? listen to you? Yeah, I remember when I was did like... Did she encourage you? Oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. When I was like around five five years old, if she was reading like a story to me, like she read Green Eggs and Ham to me. Yes. I hated the way it ended though. Cause you I was did? like, why did he give in? If he doesn't <laughs> like it, he shouldn't still like it. You thought that at five? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I told her, I was like, mommy, no, it should have went like, I still don't like Green Eggs and Ham. I still don't like them, Sam, I am. Yes. And she was just like, okay, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know, is it fair to say that your rhyming started with Dr. Seuss? You know, now that is you it? mention it, probably I mean, so. I never thought about it until you just started Green Eggs and, can and Ham. <laughs> I still don't like it, Sam I Am. Yeah. Now, here we have on the come up, we can go to your Instagram to see your original reaction when the book came. Yes. Because, number one, I love seeing joy in other people. And you held up the book and you said, it's like my... My baby. ...has been born. <laughs> yeah. And so this baby came from where? You know, this baby came from a lot of long hours and just thinking about stuff that I went through when I was a teenager. You know, um, after The Hate You Give, I knew that I wanted to do a story about hip hop. And then I also knew that I wanted to do something to speak to kids even more so in neighborhoods like my old one, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I thought about- What's your old neighborhood and what is it about hip hop, the story that you wanted to tell? What is your old neighborhood? My old I haven't been to your house, so I don't know. <laughs> What it is. Well, you're more than welcome to come. Yes, I would um, love to. I grew up in a neighborhood called Georgetown back in Jackson, Mississippi. It's actually the same neighborhood where Medgar Evers lived. Oh, okay. um, my mom was a little girl when it happened. She actually heard the shots that killed him. Oh. So that's how close my house was to his. And Georgetown, though, after all of the civil rights stuff, Georgetown went down, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was a neighborhood of gangs and drug dealers. I heard, heard gunshots every single night. Mm -hmm. um, but what hip hop did for me and for so many kids like me was they were telling us stories that we connected with and they made us feel seen. Yeah. You know, um, when... Because the stories of the day, like what was that when you were a little kid that you said, well, that's not really my life? Mm -hmm. Like... Um, well, let's see. I would have to say, I remember... A lot of times teachers would give us Little House on the Prairie. Yeah. And I have nothing against that, but yeah. I was like, this isn't me. There's not me in that book, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, but there was one book I did see myself in, and that was Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. Mm -hmm. And that was like the only one, but I, I had a hard time connecting with books. Yeah, so you said, I want to tell a story that I can relate to. Yes. And it was hip hop. Yes. Because hip hop does what for for you and for others, it, people who love this genre of music. It tells our stories and it gives us a voice. You know, I remember hearing Tupac for the first time when I was like eight years old. Which, by the way, could you just <laughs> your foot for a second? As Should I take the two, shoe off yes, to please. show it? Okay. You're the first person I know that wears <laughs> Tupac socks. <laughs> this is like, what you call commitment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but go ahead. You said about Tupac. Yeah, I remember hearing <laughs> Keep Your Head Up for the first yes, time. Yeah. And he was like, um, I give a holler to my sisters on welfare. Tupac cares if don't nobody else care. And that was deep for me because I was yeah. like, here I am, this poor kid and this guy I've never met yeah, just said, says, I, I care. care. Yeah. Like, that's powerful. I felt yeah. seen. I felt heard. So mm -hmm. for so many kids like me, that's what hip-hop did for us. Yeah. And then when you had the world saying, you know, like the majority saying, oh, that's trash, oh, it's negative, this and that, that was like telling us that our lives are trash. Or your lives don't matter. Exactly. Yeah. So hip-hop validated us. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I think that's what everybody wants is validation. So I look at you, talk about validation. You're certainly validated on your second, first book, and now your second book. Did you feel pressure with your second book since your first was such a success? I did initially. It was all from me. You know, I did it to myself. Self-imposed. Oh, yeah. I'm my biggest critic. Mm -hmm. And I, at first, every time I wrote a line, it felt like 
thousands of eyes were watching over my shoulder saying, Star wouldn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Star was the character in The Hate You Give. Yes, yeah. yeah, and I just had to get to the point of saying, well, Bree says this. Uh -huh. and, and, and I'm happy that I went through the struggle because I learned to listen to my own voice and my own author voice and know that my instincts are good and I can follow what I want to follow and write what I want to write and write it for me, not for my readers. Yeah. So I tell them all the time, I wasn't thinking about you guys when I wrote this book. <laughs> I was thinking about you. Were, you were now in Bree's head. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that you had two different characters, led two strong female characters, Star in The Hate You Give, Bree in uh, The Come Up. Mm -hmm. And, but you, they also had different family dynamics, yeah. which I thought was interesting that there's a story behind that that you wanted to tell too. Absolutely. That I also think is important. Absolutely. For me, it was very important to show Two young black girls from the same neighborhood whose lives. I, I remember when I did you, when mm -hmm. I did you, when I interviewed you. Yes. For uh, <laughs> for the hate you give, I was so excited that Star came from a nuclear family. Yes. Okay, and on the come up, Bree does not. Yes. And you said, but they're both very important. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Explain. Yes. Well, it was <laughs> it was in, extremely important because <laughs> I wanted to show two young ladies from the same neighborhood whose lives aren't the same because so often. Black girls are stereotyped. Yeah. Their, gen their generalizations made about Y'all are them. angry. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Or, you know, you all come from the same kind of household yes. yeah. and you have the same kind of temperament. And I wanted to show people that that's not true. And yeah. then with Bree's family being a bit dysfunctional at times, I mm -hmm. wanted to say that even those kids, their stories deserve to be told, mm -hmm. so. You also, I read something interesting about anger. You said anger is not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what did you say about that? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought, yeah, that that's a message we need to put out. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, because um, so often that angry black girl or angry yes. black woman stereotype is used and it's used to make us feel as if we can't be angry, but there's nothing wrong with being angry. That doesn't mean we're being illogical. That doesn't yes. mean... Um, Irrational. We're, exactly. Yes. That doesn't mean that what we're feeling isn't um, relevant. So we should be able to have our anger. I say it, men get to be angry all the time, so why sure. can't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and sometimes anger is also very important and, dare I say, justified. Yes. Let's talk about Bree's character, though, because she, she's... First explain, I actually know what it means, but for those of you who don't, what does On the Come Up mean? Mm -hmm. um, and for this book, it has two meanings for me. Um, one... I only is, know one. Okay, well, I'll tell you the... You know, <laughs> you know the first one. Um, when someone says they're on the come up, that means they're on the verge of making it. Yes. They're on the verge of That's succeeding. That's what I know, yeah. Yeah, but in the South, we say someone's coming up as a way of saying mm -hmm. they're growing up. Oh, so okay, okay. I'm saying she's on the verge of growing up. This is her coming of age tale. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Bree has always wanted to be a rapper. Her father is dead. Mm -hmm. She didn't really know her father, mm -hmm. um, and he was killed. But he was a very, he was a legendary rapper in the area, mm -hmm. and so she wants to be a rapper, but not necessarily because of her father. Right. Right. She actually loves rapping. Right, right. It's her passion, too. It's her way of expressing herself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was important for me, even in the sense of, here's this young lady who's going into an industry that's so male-dominated yeah. for her to have her own reason for wanting to do it mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with her dad, and she wants to establish herself apart from him. So it, it's, in some ways, it's almost an analogy of what it's like to be a young woman in hip-hop when you have the forefathers of the genre glaring down at you, yeah. basically, like, why are you worthy? Like in Bree's <laughs> Room, hanging on her wall. Yes. Is um, Queen Latifah, yeah. Missy Elliott, oh, yeah. right. MC Light, uh, Cardi, Nikki. She's got them both. She doesn't yeah. believe in the beef. She's, she's <laughs> not choosing between them. And she um, says like the queens of hip hop are looking down on her. Yes. And so they're sort of an inspiration to her every day. Yes. You, you know, the other thing you did that I thought was interesting is that you gave us some insight into how rap works for Brie. And could you talk about that? Because I was very fascinated by the way you wrote it. You could see words coming out of her head and how she would pair one with the other with the other with the other. And then in the very next page, you showed us how she put it all together. Yeah. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You know, that was hard to do, was but it? it was. Explain what you did. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, um, I would try to come up with the raps myself ahead of time, and then I'd look back over them and say, okay, what's her purpose for this word? Mm -hmm. I wanted every word to have purpose because I wanted to take it seriously because rappers take it seriously. I wanted to respect the craft. And so it was, it was important for me to not just have her doing words and without meaning behind them mm -hmm. so that my readers can even see there's purpose so that hopefully they will actually listen to rap songs and realize, huh, there's a reason Kendrick rhymed that with that. There's a reason yeah. J. Cole did that with that. 
I'm trying to find a part in the book. Do you remember mm -hmm. where you sort of laid out something for us, like sister could rhyme with? I thought, I never thought of that <laughs> as rhyming. But do you remember the part I'm talking about? I think towards the end, yeah. But I do know, too, like in the beginning, towards Okay, the let's beginning, do that. Like when she's doing the battle rap, and so yes. she's thinking about it. She's like, here I am coming at him as if I don't have any manners. Yes. What well, rhymes with yes. manners? Cameras. Cameras. Hammer. Pamper. You know, and stuff like that. And she's like, hammer. MC Hammer. People don't consider him a real rapper. Some people don't. You know, who's another one? Vanilla Ice. And yes. she starts rhyming, rhyming stuff with that. And so she wants to connect every single line so that it tells a story. I know, I did like that. So can you do that in the one that you did in the book? <laughs> can you I may have it? to find it. <laughs> oh. You're supposed to know it off the top of your head. <laughs> I do know it. Actually, I do. I do. Okay, because I started. Go, it, go it goes, my apology. See, I forgot my manners. I get on the mic because it's my life. You show off for girls and cameras. You're a pop star, not a rapper. A vanilla ice or a hammer. I hear this messy dumping out. Somebody get him a pamper. Yeah. <laughs> and then we went, oh, and then the beat, you even said to people, ooh. <laughs> I can picture because you said people, ooh, and then put their hands yeah. over the, like, ooh, I thought that was so good. Also, and the, the other part I liked is that you said you can't have Brie with, no, Brill, you can't have Brill, Brie, you can't have Brie without Brilliant. Yes. Do you remember how you used that in a rap? Because I thought that was good too. Yeah, you can only say Brilliant by first saying Brie. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> what can you say with Gail? Gail? Uh, I know, it's Jail, Whale, <laughs> Gail. Is there a good word when you hmm. can't have something? Here, you mull that over. Next time I, I will, see you, you'll come up with I will something. come up Because I something. thought that was so good. You can't have brilliant without brief. Or it's, I love that. Yes. So also, there's there's a little love interest in this book. Yes. <laughs> Are you telling us about your life, Angie? <laughs> you is know. There a, is, there a, is there a Malik or a... The other young man? We yes. won't spoil it. Um, you know. I know I didn't want to say the name for that very reason. I did when I was at that age. And it was, it was important for me to show what it's like to even, as you're growing up, what yes. does it mean when you're growing up and you're maybe growing apart? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, I get asked that even about what the hate you give and Chris. They're like, was there a Chris? Yeah. <laughs> Is there a Chris or a Malik or the other name? <laughs> that we can speak to on this date, February 5th? Um, not today, no. Or do you not want to say because mom is here, people are watching, or you want to share it later? Um, not right now. It's like, right. I got to go. <laughs> All I can say to you is congratulations. Last time you said you were living in Jackson, Mississippi. Yes. That you wanted to stay there, your hometown, because you wanted people to be able to see you. Are you still in Jackson, Mississippi? Yeah, for now. For now. Yeah. So you are open to moving. Yeah, I, I, I have an interesting relationship with Mississippi. Uh -huh. Someone once described Mississippi as being a, a parent, an abusive, emotionally abusive parent. Yeah. You know that, you know, you love them, but sometimes you wonder if they love you. Yeah, but yeah, Oprah's from Mississippi, as you know, and she also, also often talks about it was the most segregated state mm -hmm. in the country, that she came from that state to be who she is. Mm -hmm. So. I understand how it can be a complicated relationship. Yes. All I can say is I'm cheering you on. Thank you. I can't wait to see what you do next, but I will definitely go see on the come up in the big in the, in the movie theaters. Thank you. Congrats to you. Thank you. Oh, who's directing? George Tillman again. Who directed again? Yes. Well, I think you yes. and George have bonded. I yeah, like it. Yeah, yeah, George is awesome. And you, you always do it well with Gail. Yeah. <laughs> Always do what? Say again? You always do it well with Gail. Oh, I like I, that. I See how well with that. Gail kind of rhymes when she did it. <laughs> Angie, thank you. On the Come Up is on sale right now wherever you like to buy your books.